Okay, everybody. Um, thank you for joining us tonight. Uh, we are here to talk through the Henry W. Du Bois Pedestrian and Bicycle Improvement Project. Um, it, the last time that we met, it was in October, and we're here now in the full, almost full bloom of summer. So thank you for joining us tonight. Tonight's presentation, um, we're going to, as I mentioned before, the meeting is being recorded. It will be posted on the website and also posted to the town's YouTube channels. The break sessions will also be posted, recorded and posted, as well as the question and answer session. Um, during this presentation and Q&A session, the attendees' videos are off. Uh, attendees are all muted. You are able to chat hosts only and IT only. When we go into the breakout sessions, you will have full capabilities to have your videos on. You will also be able to, you will be muted upon entry. Um, we ask that you're using the raise hand feature or the chat box, and you are able to chat everyone in those sessions. Um, before we get started, I also wanted to kind of give you a, an idea of how we're going to run this presentation. We have a 20 minute progress update, a presentation that will cover the progress update, design details, the schedule and next steps. We also have uh, the breakout sessions, which will be about 45 minutes. And then whatever time we have left over leading to 7.30, we will do a question and answer session. Lindsay will be fielding the questions and I will be answering them. So as we get closer, we'll remind you, but we direct all of your questions to go to Lindsay. Um, we have enough mechanism in case you inadvertently message me or Steve, but um, try to get your questions directed to Lindsay. So with that, I want to introduce Steve Bryson. He is our principal in charge for the project. You can see him on the screen. Uh, he will be moderating one of the breakout sessions tonight, and we're thankful that he's here from us for us. And uh, Lindsay Zefting, I'm sure most of you know Lindsay from before, from the previous public meeting that we had. She is our bike ped advisor, and she is also handling the public relations part and was really instrumental in, in tonight's uh, meeting. So with that, here are the housekeeping items. I kind of already mentioned those were being recorded. These are the features during the presentation and Q&A session, and then also the breakout session. So right now, videos are off and attendees are muted. So with that, let's get started and talk about a little bit of where we've come since October. We, the, regarding environmental, um, we started off with endangered species. That was a discussion that we were having in October at the pu public meeting. Not shortly after that meeting, we received our consultation information, notice that our consultation was complete. That happened on October 22nd. The bog turtle was found to have no suitable habitat and the Indiana bat um, is, is not going to be impacted as long as we cut trees after November 1st and before March 31st. Our next item was section 106. This was historic properties. We received the determination November 20th that no historic properties were being affected by the project. Seeker was a uh, negative declaration was determined on January 7th, 2021. And then the project received NEPA, which is um, for New York State, for the National Environmental Protection Agency, it's the, that the project will not cause any significant environmental impacts. That determination was received not that long ago, uh, in April 19th, 2021. So at this point, all of our environmental clearances have been completed, and we are moving forward with the project. Uh, there are no additional environmental clearances that are required for the project. So we also received some public comments after the public meeting, and we had the comment period open uh, basically from the public meeting all the way till November 25th. The design report was released, the draft, and there was a two-week comment period. There were a lot of similar comments, and I just kind of listed some of the major ones that were here. The posted speed limit is too high, 35 miles an hour, and um, you know the posted speed limit, the proposed speed limit is not proposed at 35, that's the design speed. It is not the same as the posted speed limit, which will remain at 30 miles an hour. Uh, there was commentary about traffic calming elements missing from the preliminary plan. That was mostly due to the fact that we did not have a preferred alternative at that time. So determining what elements would go where needed to occur after the alternative, the preferred alternative was determined and recommended. 
don't remove trees. I think this is probably one of the most comments, uh, the largest comments that we received. Um, we have significantly minimized tree removals, vegetation removals. All removals are being replaced with an in-kind, similar in-kind replacement, and we have committed to a minimum one-to-one -one mitigation ratio. Um, so anytime we are removing a tree, we are replacing it with an in-kind replacement as best as we can. Um, there was some commentary that the public was not engaged enough, the comment period was too short, no accommodations were made for those without computers. Um, we have changed that a little bit for this time around. The pandemic has definitely caused some issues for us, um, but we're here hosting tonight. We have, uh, we will have an opportunity for everyone to engage during the breakout sessions. And we also uh, have posters that the supervisor has uh, in his hands and he will be posting in the town hall starting tomorrow. Those posters are the same information that you're going to see tonight. They will be posted in the town hall and will be up all the way through June 23rd. And so one of the other updates was design approval. This was a big question for everyone. When will we get design approval? What will that look like? And uh, it was officially granted May, April 19th, 2021. That was after NEPA was approved. And in May 18th, about a month later, we were given the authorization to enter into detailed design. This authorization came from DOT as a result of coordination with the Federal Highway Administration. So at this point, we have our clearances checked off and we are moving now into detailed design. Um, and then for right of way, there was a lot of discussion about you know, the right of way impacts. When we started in last year this time, the right of way impacts were unknown. Uh, when we got to August, they were pretty significant. By the time we got to October, we had narrowed it down to one temporary easement at the New Paltz storage location. The DOT had some comments and concerns specifically about the steward shops, uh, and they requested some verification about the New Paltz storage uh, acquisition. And so we felt that at that time, you know, we needed to do investigate a little bit more. By the time that we got to design approval, which was in uh, April, we are now down to one right away impact, which is with Stewart's, and that is not an acquisition um, in the sense of we're taking land from them. It's a permanent easement. Uh, we've been coordinating with them and, and have already started that process. There's already an easement existing on the property. You can see here we have uh, the area shown in pink. It's an existing easement and it was originally deeded to the village, so it kind of needed to do some cleanup. So just for anyone, uh, since you know we have done all this design work, but the question is, what is the preferred alternative? The preferred alternative is the shared use path. So the roadway will remain at 10 foot lanes. That's what's existing today. And a shared use path will be placed on the south side of the road. In most cases, almost everywhere, it's 10 feet. Uh, wide. There are some locations where it is narrow as eight. We've tried to minimize those locations as much as possible. And there are a few couple tiny sections where there are nine where we're trying to avoid utility poles and some other important features. So now that you have some of the background as to where we are, we're going to start talking about some of the design details. And this is really what we wanted to focus on tonight, mostly because these are the elements that we feel are going to make this project a success. And we want to make sure that we get everyone's input. And, and just for full on clarity, we have discussed these items previously before this meeting tonight with the steering committee we have talked with some landowners some of the comments we have you know reflected some of these questions or items that we're going to be talking about so this information is is really now we're getting into the nitty-gritty details so let's talk about landscaping first um, in Right after we got design approval, right there around that time, we developed a plant palette. The intent of the plant palette is really to identify what kind of plants we will be placing on the corridor for replacements or enhancements to the corridor. And they are native plants to New York. Um, they are a variety. We have large deciduous trees, small deciduous trees, shrubs, and we also have evergreen coniferous trees. The plant palette was developed. We sent it to the Shade Tree Commission, and we also sent it to the Environmental Conservation Board for review. 
On May 19th, the Environmental Conservation Board approved the planting pallet as it stood with a request that if the pallet was reduced in some way that attention we paid to native plants and those that are, you know, not invasive and present with on the corridor. We have not heard from the Shade Tree Commission officially, um, but we are moving forward with that plant pallet. So the plant pallet was revised and preliminary landscaping plans were developed shortly thereafter. We have also met with most of the affected landowners. I was out there personally meeting with people last Tuesday. We, I've also had some phone calls in the last two weeks um, to kind of talk about what are the impacts, how are we addressing them, and what is the plan forward for this process. And so they received, those individuals received the plant pallet. They also received a plan sheet of their property explaining, you know, what is happening and, and kind of what our initial vision of the replacements look like. They have until June 23rd to provide some their feedback to us about either the placement or the species on their property. Um, there are some individuals that we have been trying to get in contact with and have not been successful. So if you received a letter from us, um, we would like to speak with you and kind of talk through some of these elements of the project. So once we get comments back from the landowners, then we will revise the landscaping plans and get ready to submit to the Department of Transportation for their review and also the town. Here is the plant palette. Um, Steve Fryson, our principal in charge, will be moderating one of those, the landscaping session this evening. Um, so you will be able to have an opportunity to look at these plants and what we're proposing um, to use throughout the quarter. We are trying to uh, have a variety of species so that way if there is an issue with an insect or a disease or something, it doesn't wipe out everything that we plant. Diversity is good and it's also visually appealing to have some differentiation. So this is our large deciduous trees that we're proposing. These are the small deciduous trees. These are things like the red bud and the crab apple that add a little bit of color throughout the year um, in the springtime specifically. And then we have evergreens, trees, and shrubs. And there's a, a wide variety here as well. And these are some of the shrubs. So a rhododendron, a dogwood, trees like that. So in talking about the barrier, which is going to be one of our other breakout sessions, I will be moderating that session this evening. Um, we reached out to the steering committee. We had a meeting with them and talked about the barrier. In advance of that meeting, we sent them a survey and asked two questions. The first question being, what is most important to you? Visibility of the barrier to motorists, aesthetic appearance of the barrier, physical protection of non-motorized users from the, the vehicle traffic, ease of maintenance, prevention of trail users from entering the roadway, construction cost and maintenance cost. And you can see this first question on the left, the biggest response was physical protection of users from non-motorized users from the vehicle traffic. The next question that we asked was, we wanted them to identify what options would be acceptable to the community regarding aesthetics? That was one of the comments that we heard uh, throughout this whole process is that the aesthetics is really important. We know that the corridor is beautiful. Um, it's, and you know, aesthetics is definitely plays a big part. And so we provided a series of uh, options for pictures, which are also, you'll be seeing this, this evening later on in the breakout sessions. And by far, timber was the number one. The second was metal that is weatherized. So that's like your core 10 steel. Um, it looks like it's rusted steel. That was the second option. The issue becomes is that these two items that you see here, having physical protection of users from the traffic, and then the material don't necessarily work well together. Um, and so that's where we have to do a little bit of give and take. And tonight, when we get into our breakout sessions, we want to talk through that with all of you, recognizing that um, it, it's not always possible to get the prettiest thing isn't always the most protective thing. And DOT, of course, has some concerns and, you know, and we, we've spoken to them. So I want everyone to start thinking about that and keep that in mind as we go through this evening. So when we did talk to DOT, we said, okay, look, 
we know that we need something and here's kind of what we're saying what we're thinking we presented a whole bunch of aesthetic options to dot and told them what we thought that the corridor needed which was physical protection of non-motorized users from the traffic so it needed to be something that had redirective capabilities but it also needed to be something that looked nice and essentially this is what they came back with this is dot's steel backed timber rail um, I don't know that I would say it's the prettiest thing out there, but it's pretty, I guess it, ha it has its timber, right? And so that it does meet some of the criteria that we're looking for. Um, the biggest complication, I believe, is, you know, the overall width of this is pretty wide. And so that's something to consider as we start talking about the separation barrier in, in the breakout sessions tonight. And you can also see there's some bolted connections. Um, you can see these here, the steel is on the backside, which that's what gives us the strength, um, but there are a lot of bolts. So if it gets run into, it definitely can be a little challenging for maintenance to maintain. Um, and so here are the other options and you'll see these later on in the breakout sessions as well. For the side path, we are showing, uh, we do have a section where we have the grass, five foot grass median that's down near Stewart's all the way to Prospect. We have a two foot asphalt median with box beam guide rail, median rail. That is what we showed before in the photo sim. Um, it doesn't have to be that, but that's definitely still on the table. And then we have the two foot raised curb. And this is really going to be used in our narrow of narrow sections. It's where we need as much um, minor width as possible. The other element that we are focusing on tonight is traffic calming elements. The plan as it is right now has both uh, horizontal and vertical elements. Lindsay is going to be leading that session tonight for the moder for, as the moderator. In the horizontal elements that we have, we have pinch points. We're proposing them between Mill Rock and North Mannheim, and also between Old Mill and Meadowbrook Circle. And then that's, these are the pinch points on the right. And then we also have a pedestrian refuge island at the mid block crossing near Briarwood Court. There is already a crossing there today. There are, there are curb ramps on either side. Um, we feel like that this crossing needs a little bit more attention paid to, and it will draw the eye also further down to church and kind of set everybody up to bring it down to pedestrian scale. Um, for the vertical elements, we've talked about this before, raised crosswalks. Church Street is one location where we're proposing, um, I wouldn't call it a raised crosswalk, but you're definitely going to feel it. You will feel some sort of vertical uh, change in elevation. And just due to the grades, that's why I'm not calling it a raised crosswalk, but it, it does exhibit those characteristics. And then at the Waring Lane Meadowbrook Circle intersection, uh, we know that there's a lot of people that are coming from the neighborhood, walking across to Meadowbrook or they're connecting or vice versa, and then they're also connecting to the back of tops. The other element which has not been placed on the corridor yet uh, is speed cushions or humps. The speed cushions are nice because they let emergency services go through, but they will also be inconvenient for vehicles. So they will have some um, speed deterrent involved in them. The humps would go throughout the entire width of the road. So those speed cushions and humps, they are not shown on the plan tonight. We are working on where those placements are. We kind of wanted to leave it open for discussion and see what you all felt about where that placement would be. And so some of the other traffic changes we have are striped crosswalks uh, at Prospect, North Oakwood Terrace, Mill Rock, and North Mannheim. We also are proposing a rectangular rapid flashing beacon at Church Street. The rectangular rapid flashing beacon is similar to what you have at North Putt. Um, it would be activated by pushing the button and you would see the blinking alternating lights. So for next steps um, be beyond this evening's meeting, I'm sure you've seen this graph before. We had this at our last presentation last time. We were somewhere between assemble draft design approval documents and public and agency review. We have assessed the agency public comments. We recommended a preferred alternative. We received final design approval. And now we are here somewhere between, you know, we just got design approval less than a month ago. So we are just starting detailed design and the, going through the right-of-way acquisition process. 
The project schedule, this is also up on the website, but we are doing design and public engagement now. We will be heavily into design throughout the rest of the summer. The plan is to put a, a public bid in the fall. Um, and really the, the intent of that is so we can get a contractor on board to do any of the tree clearing that needs to happen or tree removals um, in the winter time to adhere to the bat, tree clearing windows. So make sure we don't disturb the bats and then heading into the roadway construction in the spring and summer. Um, any new plants most likely will be planted in the fall of 2022 or the later part of the summer of 2022. We can't dictate when that happens. Um, we just can dictate to the contractor that it's, it needs to happen before the end of the construction season in 2022. And so the key date that we want everybody to remember uh, for tonight is the public comment period on this information that we're presenting to you tonight is uh, June 23rd. So there's a couple ways that you can provide your feedback. Uh, you can fill out the Google form. There's a link here. Uh, also, there was an email sent out to everyone on our contact list with that Google form link, and you can fill it out there. You can send an email to hwd at altogo.com. That email eventually gets to me and Lindsay and Kara McKnight, who is on our team, plus our IT people. We do monitor it during the comment period. We will not be responding. We will respond after the close of the comment period. And then the other way is you can leave a comment at the town hall. We will have the posters. You can write on the posters if you like. We will be sending over comment forms to the town so that they have them there. And you can provide written comment in that way as well. And then finally, if you really need to, you can always contact me or Lindsay via email and phone. Our information is at the end of this um, presentation. So let's talk a little bit about the breakout sessions. We're right close to 20 minutes uh, for our presentation. We have three breakout rooms available. In a moment, IT is going to open up those breakout rooms. I will be moderating the separation barrier room, Lindsay will be moderating the traffic calming, and Steve will be moderating the landscaping. Each session is 15 minutes for a total of 45 minutes. We really encourage you to visit all of the sessions. When IT turns the breakout rooms on, you will be able to pick which room you go into. If we see that any one room has too much capacity, we will be shuffling people around just to help facilitate each room and, and make sure that we're getting attention paid to everyone that's in the individual rooms. It's, it's more of a distribution of loads so that you know we can get everybody's comments in. But there is a total of 45 minutes. If you only want to be in one room for that 45 minutes, go ahead, you can stay there. If you want to do two rooms and not the other, you have that choice as well. You are able to enter and leave a room at any time. All sessions will close after 45 minutes though, and we will all be brought back into this main room where we're sitting now, um, where your videos and uh, you will be muted. For the breakout rooms themselves, so we're doing a little bit of an interactive session. The moderators, myself, Lindsay and Steve, we will be sharing our screens showing a concept board. Concept board is another program that we're using. Um, you are not required to log in to access it. We will be providing a link to click on. As soon as you get into the breakout sessions, you can click on that link, provide your first and last name and log in as a guest. Each breakout room does have different boards. So in the landscaping room, Steve is going to have the landscaping palette plus the rendering showing tree removals and also showing the full impacts of the project. Lindsay's room will have the traffic calming elements, what are available to us, vertical, horizontal, and other treatments. And she will also have the renderings as well. And in my room, which is the separation barrier, we will have all of the options available on the table, as well as options that were considered, but also dismissed, in addition to the rendering. To enter into a new breakout, to enter a new room, look up for the breakout room button on the lower right hand of your screen, and you can just select a different room to enter at any time. When you're in the breakout rooms, comments can be made either verbally by using the raise hand feature, you can use the chat box, or you can write directly on the concept board. That is one of the features why we wanted to use concept board tonight. It allows you to get in there and make your comment right on the board and you'll have that saved as we, um, once we end all of the sessions this evening. 
So there are some ground rules about these about these breakout sessions. If you're going to speak, we request that you state your first your full name, first name, last name. We are asking that only one person speak at a time. Please use the raise hand feature and the moderator will recognize and call on you. We ask that you be respectful and considerate of the opinions of others. This is a meeting for everyone to attend and everyone's voice counts for something. So we want to make sure that we are able to hear everyone. We do not want to have any derogatory, inflammatory, demeaning, or vulgar language. If that occurs um, and your the behavior is disruptive, IT or the moderators will push you back into the main room where you will sit until you're allowed to let to come back into the into the session you were in. If we have to move someone three times, that will be an automatic removal of to the meeting with no option for re-entry. This is supposed to be a collaborative experience. We want everybody to really have an opinion and opportunity to speak. So we just want everyone to have a, a good time and, um, and share your thoughts and feelings. That's what we're here for tonight and, and make this um, the best project that we can make it. So with that, um, IT is going to open up the rooms and uh, we'll be back in 45 minutes to do the Q&A. Thank you for coming back to us. Um, I'm going to just give it a minute to make sure that we have everybody back in here with us. And I'm also going to share my screen. We're gonna do a live Q&A session for the next 15 minutes. I would encourage you to uh, send your questions in to Lindsay and she's going to field them for us. Um, just give me one second. I'm pulling up the chat feature for myself. Here we go. Hey, Christy. Yes. Before you go to those, there were a few questions that came up in landscaping that were kind of general. If I might throw those out there to start. Sure. And one that came up a couple times has to do with pinch points and whether or not, as they're shown, are those intended to be traffic calming or my understanding from some of your and my earlier uh, conversations was that had more to do with some of the lateral constraints that causes us to have to narrow down the improvements in those areas, like the- Yeah, pool. it's primarily traffic calming. Um, really? We are getting an added benefit of, you know, having minimized uh, road work, you know, and also it doesn't really change the location of the shared use path. It does provide us an opportunity to do some plantings a little closer to the road because we have increased width. Coming out of our session, one of the last comments that we got was <clears throat> can we, you know, can we use vegetation instead of uh, barriers and sticks and things like that inside the maintenance strip? And so those pinch points provide a little bit of an opportunity to, to add a little bit of color and softness to the, um, to, the, to the roadway. But they are primarily as a speed reduction tool and also as a deterrent for those that are using bypass traffic um, to be able to continue to just run right through the intersections. Okay. Uh, another uh, question that was raised, uh, John Gatto had sent to Alta a proposal for the Meadowbrook area and uh, you had shared with me that we were looking to replace not only one-to-one -one, but uh, greater than one-to-one -one in that general location. Yeah. And his his proposal, as I understand it, was looking at moving where the, the pathway might be to uh, try to preserve some of the larger, more mature trees. Right. Uh, so is that what we ended up doing? Can you speak a little bit to that? No, we didn't end up doing that. And it's a, it's a little bit of a twofold thing. One, um, as we divert the trail around and through um, the Meadowbrook property, there is a stream crossing and a bridge would be needed to get over it. So cost um, is definitely an issue and a challenge. Um, so that's that's one concern. The other concern is that, you know, we have right of way needs that would need to be accommodated. And not that that can't happen, uh, definitely is something, you know, we are working with stewards, but our goal was really to try and minimize impact to, you know, adjacent properties and, and minimize the amount of right way takings that we need. One, because it costs the project more. Two, because it takes the project a longer duration to, you know, make through, get to construction. And, you know, we're really trying to minimize how much right of way acquisition that 
um, <clears throat> that is for the project. So John, we did talk about it. The supervisor and I had talked about it shortly after we you know, received your comment. The bridge location is just kind of a non-starter because it just puts the project budget, budget out of line. And then the other thing is going down and around it also increases the length and the, you know, the overall construction limits. It's a maintenance thing too for the town. The town is required to maintain this facility for the duration, um, basically in perpetuity. I, I'm not sure on that, but that's my understanding is that the town is required to maintain it in perpetuity, but I haven't seen that agreement. So I don't wanna you know, um, speak out of turn, but it becomes a maintenance issue overall through, through the life of, you know, of the shared use path and for the town to be able to go and maintain that facility. Uh, one of the other questions we got, Christy, was are there any lights or lighted signs being added as part of the design? If so, where and what kinds? So we have the RFBs, that's a rectangular rapid flashing beacons. We are suggesting that they be implemented at the crossing of church, just knowing how many people use that crossing and also are going to Moriello Pool. Um, as of right now, that's the only location. There has been discussion about lighted stop signs. I think there are some others located you know, in the town where those stop signs have LED lights around the outside. There was discussion about that. They are not currently proposed. Um, we're not opposed to them, but they're just not a part of the plan at the moment. Did I answer all of your question? <laughs> right. Generally a question about lighting. Um, oh, no additional lighting for the entire project. Whatever is there today will be there today. We are going to try to talk to Central Hudson and Gas to relocate one light at North Oakwood Terrace. It's on a single, it's a cobra headlight on a single pole by itself. Um, and there's a pole right next to it. So we're gonna try and see if we can get that light relocated to that pole. But in general, we're not adding any additional lighting. Um, there were, uh... I think some technical, some folks ran into some technical issues just being able to see all the screens. So just I'll remind everyone that um, we will have large printed boards available at uh, Town Hall and all the meeting materials will be posted to the website, correct? Yes, Christy? yes, that's correct. We will probably post them tonight, if not tonight, tomorrow morning. So if, if for whatever reason you weren't able to uh, see the materials tonight um, or just weren't able to look at them or, or zoom in and, and see the detail you wanted to see, um, all of those will be available at the website or at Town Hall tomorrow. Um, uh, there was another question on, uh, you know, a, well, a question we, we've seen before, why Henry Du Bois instead of Main Street? So Henry W. Du Bois, I mean, this goes back to, I, I want to say like the 1990s maybe, or even earlier. It was identified as a pedestrian and bicycling route. Then the Empire State Trail picked it up and it became, um, you know, Empire State Trail had to divide bicycles and pedestrians, mostly because Main Street has zero capacity. You know, it's a, there is no real excess capacity available to fit a, a bicycling facility besides shared lanes on, on Route 299 through, you know, on Main Street. Um, so this project, really the goal is to, it's one of the very few sections on the Empire State Trail where pedestrians and bicyclists are not together, where the, the route is divided. Um, it is also the only segment between New York City and and correct me if I'm wrong, Lindsay, but New York City and Kingston, where the Empire State Trail is not a separated facility. Um, everywhere else between New York City and Kingston has an off-road shared use path. So it's also about maintaining continuity and providing that shared use path along Main Street is just not, it's not a feasible option. There's one other short gap between New York City, but yes, we're, we're so close. <laughs> we're yeah. all being off-road. Um, the, uh, we, a couple of comments, um, there's already too much traffic on Henry Du Bois, bicyclists never stop at stop signs, so I'm just reiterating those. If you have another question, uh, again, feel free to chat me. 
Um, oh, question. Do we have an example of comparable traffic patterns and volume using pinch points adjacent to a four-way traffic as proposed on North Mannheim and Henry and Du Bois? Um, I don't know if you want to answer that, Lindsay. It's definitely something we talked about where Lindsay and I talked about this a lot about the queuing concern, you know, because of the close proximity to, to the intersection. Um, uh, yeah, I don't know off the top of my head if we have, if there's data available for that. Lindsay or Steve, do you, either one of you have any information about that? Yeah, I, I, the question came up in my breakout room and I couldn't think of one and like that exact uh, or, or very, very similar um, situation, but we can take a closer look at the queuing. But we did factor that in, in how we space the pinch point, um, that there would be sufficient storage for queuing. Um, I got a message here directly to me about the traffic calming. Are they definitely going to be used? And right now, this is what we're suggesting based on all the comments and the feedback that we heard from, you know, various residents and community members, our steering committee. Um, so while we are recommending them, you know, I think it's up for discussion. If there's something that you really feel emphatically about that, that doesn't think you know, is going to provide a benefit, we'll take it out. I mean, this is our, in our professional judgment, what we have put forth is the, um, you know, how we can mitigate some of the traffic concerns that we heard about the trucks and the speeds and uh, the volumes and things like that, and the cut through traffic. Um, DOT will also have a say, you know, this is going to be the first time that they're going to see all of these elements in one place. <laughs> So it's definitely, you know, there is going to be some feedback from them as well about, you know, how this gets implemented and, and what gets implemented. They will, I'm sure they will have feelings about, especially most likely the pinch points. I believe that they may have some, you know, thoughts about that. And the raised crossings, you know, the grades don't necessarily work in our favor for the raised crossings. Um, but that's something that we felt is really important at those couple locations. And so we are, we are, you know, doing our best to make that work. So, you know, some of it depends on what that feedback is from DOT. Uh, Christy, what will be the final connecting link to the rail trail? Uh, yeah, the final connecting link to the Walkill Valley Rail Trail, we have, um, there is a private development project that is occurring and the connection will be included as part of that project at the, or around the same time. So basically this project will, you've already, I'm sure most of you have seen that Stewart's has built the 10 foot shared use path in concrete um, that goes down to the intersection of 32 and Henry W. There is a crosswalk there and there is also a 10 by 10 landing pad. There is going to be a 65 foot connection on the west side of Route 32 that will bring bicyclists and pedestrians north. And then there's a direct shot through between the two parcels directly to Walk Hill Valley Rail Trail um, through the parking lot of the new, the current um, auto body shop. So it'll be a direct connection down Henry to Boys as opposed to the dog up Church Street and around. Yes. And we are signing it that way. The timing right now is a little unclear if we're gonna come first or that connection is gonna come first, um, but we have provisions to deal with that if the timing is a little bit off. Um, and Hi. so I got a comment here about the pinch points between Millrock and Mannheim. I'm just gonna go and share my screen really quick and we're getting close on time. Just give me one second. I believe if everyone can still see my screen, um, here's the pinch point between North Mannheim and Mill Rock. So you can see um, there's the yield markings in the case of, a, of a, a car turning left, they will come and they will sit and wait and make sure that nobody is coming in the opposite direction, pass through and then continue on. Same thing in the eastbound direction. The match line here isn't the best, um, uh, unfortunately, but this is where the pinch point is. 
Uh, there was one other comment or question. Um, are we planning to have a painted line dividing east and westbound bicycle and pedestrian traffic? Can you say that again? Because you got a little muffled. Sorry. Oh, uh, are we planning on having a uh, a stripe or a, a center line down the shared use path? Um, not for the entire way at the intersections, especially where we have crossings. Um, we definitely are going to include some pavement markings there to delineate a hey, state of the right type thing and also to visually make aware of where those crossings are going to, to happen and also to kind of provide that visual cue of you are approaching something different and there will be a stop sign as well. And uh, do we ex anticipate an impact on emergency vehicle traffic, especially with the uh, new firehouse and rescue squad going in at the east end? Um, so pretty much all of the implementation that we're talking about doing will have very little to no effect on emergency services. The pinch points are the biggest concern. Their width at their nearest point is 14 feet. It's more than a typical travel lane, so it's not going to be an issue. They're not that long. The pinch points are only 20 feet. They don't even fit necessarily the full length of a car. Parking space is somewhere between 22 and 25 feet long, in some cases 20. So, I mean, essentially that's what it is. If an emergency service vehicle is coming, they will have their lights and sirens on. Someone will have enough time to make it through that 20 foot space and pull off to the side before an emergency vehicle will get there. Additionally, on this north side, at least this one here, there's no curbing presented. So if something should happen, you know, you can have someone uh, sitting and waiting in, in the wing and the emergency service can pass. Um, in the case, and we're running up against time here, the other pinch point is, uh, where is it? It's over here. Um, this is a very similar situation. The north side is grass, south side is just asphalt. So there's nothing preventing an emergency service vehicle from bypassing or a car passing, you know, standing off to the right. So we are at 730. Um, I don't have, I don't see any other questions. Uh, Eric Perlman has his a hand raised. Can you send in your um, question? Uh, or I can, I think I can unmute you. And this will be our last question for the evening. Um, um, thank you, Eric Perlman here. Can you clarify that former question? How will the shared pedestrian and bicycle path delineate between cyclists and pedestrians? Okay, thank you. Um, between the pedestrians and cyclists, there will be just basically uh, essentially signage kind of directing people to have rules of the road. There will be no delineation. Um, we are going to have some delineation at the crossings. Um, just to indicate that a crossing is approaching, but as a general rule, this is a shared space. So pedestrians and bicyclists alike are, uh, you know, they can, while we encourage people to stay to the right, they can use the facility um, when nobody else is um, having oncoming traffic, they can use it free flow. So as of right now, we do not have any specific delineation of the shared use path. And it'll be not, it won't be delineated space for cyclists and for pedestrians. It'll be cyclists and pedestrians in both directions. Yeah. Okay, everyone, thank you for your comments and your time tonight. We would remind you that um, we have the comment period will be ending on June 23rd. So it's two weeks from now. You can visit the project website to see the video and the postings. You can also send comments to hwd at altogo.com. You can send an email to h, um, I just said hwd at altogo.com. You can also fill out the Google link or you can uh, fill out a form at the town hall. The posters will be up and running tomorrow. And um, with that, thank you. And we really appreciate everyone's time and, and look forward to seeing you all again soon. Thank you. Thank you.